Hi folks and welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4. Now today, well first off let's wish you all a happy new year. It is, I think, well we're into 2024 now, wherever this one's going live. So uh, happy new year, I hope last year was good and I hope this year is going to be even better for, for all of you folks watching. Um, so let's get back to some Hearts of Iron 4 and I'm going to play as a historical game as Czechoslovakia. And you might be asking, Mark, why are you choosing to go and play as Czechoslovakia now of all times? Well, I've been inspired to, is a simple reason. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've played through a game called Last Train Home, which is actually, it's based on a true story of the Czechoslovak Legion um, after the end of the First World War and how they had to get home after the fighting ended from, well, all the way through a Civil War riddled Soviet Union, I guess, or Russia as it was then from here all the way to Vladivostok uh, so they could get shipped back to the newly formed Czechoslovakia. It's, it is based on true events and a true story. It's a fantastic game and I highly advise you to go and check it out. I've got the playthrough uploading one episode a day at the moment, uh, but I'll link that in the description. Go and watch it, folks. Um, it's a beautiful little war game, strategy game with some RPG elements and I thought it was fantastic. And I learned a load of stuff about it as well. So we're playing as Czechoslovakia. We're on historical and we're going to play it as, as things worked out, except that we are not going to give up any of our lands and we're going to go to war with Germany as soon as they start trying to grab stuff off us. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to rely on some, having some solid forts in the border region and uh, it's going to rely on us turtling up much like we did with Poland and hoping our allies come to our rescue. Maybe. Well, let's see. That's the plan. So what's going to be super key important about the checks and I'll tell you one thing when I loaded this up before to check out how this was going to work I was kind of surprised that um, well that the focus tree seems an awful lot more basic than the other countries we've got used to playing through with the new DLCs for or DLC for the Nordic countries which gives stacks of options and apart from Norway fantastic options uh, up there the Czech one looks like it's going to be hard so we've got to get ready uh, so obviously political direction, we're going to go the democratic bastion. That's what we are. That's what we're going to live up to. Let's pick that as our first choice, actually, and get the ball rolling over there. I'm going to go for the basic opening entry here. If anyone ever does anything different, then let me know in the comments, please, because I've never seen anyone do anything other than these three techs with their first three choices, no matter what nation you play. That they seem like kind of important for everything. But um, if there's a better opening plan or a different opening plan, then uh, let me know. It seems to work for me anyway. Okay, so, oh, we've got a whole load of unassigned divisions. Right, we're going to need an army. What have we got? We're going to have some cavalry. We've got some mount oh, actually mountaineers. Let's take those guys out because we might be able to make use of those in a particular place. And then there, there, is some, there are some tank divisions, some light tanks and some cavalry. And I, I don't expect these to be all that useful. We've got light tanks to start off with. And what we need is some good, solid infantry to defend the mountain passes. And, uh, well, I guess we shall work our way through from there. What have we got in the way of field marshals? Instantly, we've got, well, I can see we've got two. We've got one really nice, aggressive guy. All right, I've got uses for him. And we've got this defensive dude. So this guy with the defences... He's going to be our main defensive field marshal. He's going to be the one that controls the armies that ring our beautiful country here. And, uh, well, let's see. Let's form us a little front line. I'm going to try and get two armies up by the time anything kicks off. So we'll have a front line up there. And we'll try and form a second one down here. It's going to be weird because the, the front line will go across several different countries. And that causes loads of issues with the game when things kick off and start moving. So something that we need to be aware of. Uh, we seem to be rather short of generals. Okay, that's that's not great. Okay, you can go in. Um, I don't know about what to do about the mountaineers, but these lot are definitely going to be going into like an offensive army. I'm thinking of using these for counter-attacking, if we have to. But for the time being, we're just going to get people trained up. Do you have anyone who could... We really don't have a lot of field commanders, do we? Oh, that's not good. Okay, you at least are a panzer leader. So you can go in there. Yeah, it's odd. Like other countries now, small countries or countries with small armies, they're with, the, with the expansions, stacks and stacks of generals. Um, I think it's time for a little bit of love to come this way. So what have we got? Three civilian factories. Actually, let's pause the game whilst we set this up. 
I'm, I suspect I'll probably want civilian factories just to get things going, just to give us some uh, construction power. And if you look at the shape of Czechoslovakia, I mean, it looks like some sort of little tadpole here, head, tail, it's kind of cute. But this area, I think, is going to be just too hard to hold. It's so narrow and so easily cut off. So I'm thinking if we're going to like turtle up, it's going to be obviously this bit where the forts get built and probably here through the mountains. We'll try and keep uh, Zelina in as well. One issue with this strategy is you'll notice that there's a crap ton of steel and chromium outside of that area. But I, I don't know. Maybe we could hold this. It's, it's, like, it's starting to be a big ask. It might be something we can look at. It might be something worthwhile. But anyway, we will build our factories within what we're going to consider the safe zone. This is the plan. And let's hope this works because this, this is a strategy that <laughs> it might not work. So we'll see what we get. So to start off with, I really don't think we should be making a load of light tanks. We might use them for reconnaissance purposes, but they're not going to be making up divisions. We're going to re uh, reshuffle those around. They're just not suitable. Medium tanks would be a different matter. Something to think about. So we're going to start off with a load of... Can we get some artillery on the go? We do like artillery. We have more. Let's get some AA on the go as well. Right, so with that little lot, we're already short on tungsten look. Uh, and that should be enough. Let's make sure we've got enough of that. Okay, we can put something else in. I'm going to go artillery and maybe one in there. Okay, we'll get some more military factories fairly soon, I'm sure. I don't know if there's much to get from focuses in this one. Uh, let's kick off the time then. And I think we are good to go. Anything in the way of political decisions? <laughs> Dismantling the forts. Yeah, I'm not a fool. Restore the Austro-Hungarian Empire. That'll be awesome, but I think that's going to be incredibly hard to do. Especially in a historical setting. We're playing Iron Man here, by the way, too. Uh, so, Skoda Works Investments. This is the only option I've really seen ever pop up for this, is Czechoslovakia. The industrialists at Skoda Works are eager for investment. However, we can only afford to sink money into one of three branches within the company. Doing so will allow them to prioritise the development of either ships, tanks, or artillery. Right, well, obviously, shipyards is out because, I mean, what are we going to do with the Navy here? Uh, Skoda Armour. Can I have a look at these, by the way? Where do we see these things? Oh, hang on. Well, there's the... Uh, there's the. We should actually assign that straight away. That would make sense. And that should go to... We've got a fast tanks designer. I wish they, they came like pre-assigned so I don't forget these things. Luckily, we've caught it early, but what little difference it's going to make. Um... I mean, the Skoda Works were one of the, one of the reasons that uh, Germany wanted this area because they, were, they made use of the tanks and the designs um, that the Czechs were producing. Artillery would be good. And we're going to make it. Let's go, let's go Skoda armor. I don't actually know what that's going to produce for us. Is it, is it only heavy tanks? Is it only heavy tanks? You are joking. Oh, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. I, th I thought, considering we, they were famous for the light tanks <laughs> that they were making at the start of the war, that absolutely sucks. Okay. I don't think we're going to be in a situation, especially early game, to do anything with, uh, with heavy tanks. But anyway, okay. Maybe the artillery would have been a better choice. But it's... Um, hey, we don't know we're going to get attacked. So <laughs> let's, let's try and play as if it's all a big surprise to us. So Italy's doing its thing over there. Yep, it's going to try and take Ethiopia bit by bit. I can see. So we've got waiting for some command power to build up, and we can assign these guys some some uh, traits to get us through. But to start off with, for the first two years, it's just going to be producing a nice, solid country, stable economy, all that good stuff. Manpower. Ooh, manpower's. That's all right. That's, I think right away, that's going to be, yeah, I, I would love to go something else, but I'm pretty sure that the, we need that. We, we need to get the, the ranks filled. So political direction has been taken. We're not going right. We're not going left. We're going right down the middle. 
Actually, that's quite good for political power as well, so let's start that. And this is the one that we want to be. We want to be the last bastion of sanity in the middle of chaos. <laughs> chaos is exactly what it's going to be. Turkey remilitarized the Turkish Straits. You guys might not have seen this pop up before in your games. And in fact, this is fairly new to me because just in the Steam sale over Christmas, I bought myself the Battle of the Bosphorus expansion, which adds tech tree, not to, I keep on tech trees, focus trees for Bulgaria, Greece and Turkey. I don't think anyone else, but I haven't actually played with these since getting the expansion, so I don't know. So you might see a few new events pop up. Uh, let's read this out, actually. Turkey and the Soviet Union have come to an agreement on revising the Treaty of Lausanne, which was signed and implemented after the nascent, nascent Republic of Turkey repulsed the Entente in the Turkish War of Independence. The treaty has long been decried as an assault on Turkish sovereignty, but today the treaty is finally amended in favour of the newly legalised Montreux Convention. Turkey now has complete control over traffic that passes in and out of the Turkish Straits and the states around the Straits. The states around the Straits have now been remilitarized by Turkey. British observers who were a part of the process are merely satisfied that the conflict in the region has been avoided. Okay, so I guess some, someday we might play with these nations and see what's in their, their focus trees. But uh, it was about four pound for the expansion. I thought, you know, I'm going to grab that because I, I do spend a lot of time in Hearts of Iron 4. It's probably going to be worth it to us. Although the reviews were kind of mixed. So, uh, well, be interesting to see what it uh, plays like. All right, we'll jump straight into radio. I always like that. It's kind of a useful thing to have. It leads on to lots of other stuff. And then it's just a case of waiting, really, until we build up some of this. We get some political power and we can change our options. I'd like to get out of civilian economy fairly fast. Actually, we start with really good war support, which is, uh, I don't know why that's the case. Warlike checks, maybe? Second London Naval Treaty signed. We can, we can just gladly ignore everything to do with the Navy in this game. I can't see us having one in this adventure. Okay, Democratic Bastion. <clears throat> So we can't go on from there until our democracy support has increased, but it's going in the right direction. And where will it go? So it's war support, division defense on core territory. Okay, that's very, and that's a really quick one. Nice, okay, so we need to get good support for democracy before we can trigger that. And then that leads to some pretty cool stuff, uh, particularly that one there, 10% division defense. Okay, I like that. So strategic decisions over here, trust in the west or appease the germans that oh we can set set our own faction up they do have the czechoslovak legion in here look we set the rule can send volunteer forces nice uh, we're not going to do that being a democracy and then we've got trees for i mean it does have a sea a naval tree but i mean we can't do it because we don't have access to the sea those would be useful Strategic decisions probably next, although we've got the good old... Oh, now this, is, well, this one's got to come at some point. We're not quite ready for fort building yet. So I think we're going to just trash on with our economy. When in doubt, do something that helps the economy. Uh, we've got some manpower coming. Nice. We need a... Oh, we've got loads of political power. Excellent. Let's assign a general. And uh, we're going to get bombed the crap out of. So let's have some dispersed industry. I think would be a better choice. We'll see who our advisors are. A Prince of Terror? Was Czechoslovakia... Was it not the, 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 the wonderful bastion of democracy I've been led to believe? Quartermaster General? Not much use for the things I'm building to start with. The Democratic Reformer would be in a backroom backstabber, potentially. Do you know what? I'm, I'm thinking I might do this. We uh, Is this going up, by the way? Daily change, nothing, so it's not. We need to get that up. And we're going to have a chief of the army. Oh, I need to save up this guy, do I? He's a genius. However, a non-combat outer supply penalty. I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go with that. Let's just get that going. We can we can change that around later if we if we decide it's worth it. Winter expert. Okay, we're fighting in the snow then, apparently. Let's bring my air force up and see what we've got. We're going to trash all that. 
Right, now let's assign them how they should properly be assigned. So let's go over to Prague. I've been to Prague, by the way, once. It was yeah, just over four years ago. Um, went for the Christmas markets. Absolutely beautiful city. And I'm not a city person, but I, I loved Prague. Uh, we can do... We'll do one of these, just get them in training. We've got some interwar medium bombers, like tactical bombers. I think they're going to be terrible. I'm tempted to put them on the market and sell them. And we've got 48 of this uh, close war air support. Well, we could do those. I'm going to go and sell a lot. I don't like keeping crap. It's going to be out of date stuff. I'd rather get some benefit from it now. So it was that one. Someone will buy those. And I think someone will buy those. I think they'll be very little use to us. I'm going to put the price up high. And let's see if we can sell anything. Uh, let's also have a look at the templates. Oh, nice. Big templates. Because our industry is going to be kind of weak, I'm thinking 20 width. I might just go with 18 width divisions, to be quite honest. We have nothing to change there anyway. Let us get another eight of these guys trained up if we can. I'm just going to keep an eye on that manpower. But we're going to change that when we can. Come on then, all you markets around the world. That's it. We're selling to the Netherlands. I don't care who wants to buy. <laughs> the trouble is, they're going to, I know what's going to happen. They're going to get uh, conquered by Germany and all that equipment's going to go straight to Germany. So I guess we may as well just sell to Germany if Germany comes knocking and wants to buy it. Just, just cut out the middleman, right? Uh, where, where are we going now? We're in 36. We've got that going and that going. We can have a look. Uh, we definitely want that. Let's get that on the move. And we'll see if we can work our way into some more resource slots as well. Research slots, even. Nationalist Spain declared war on Spain. We can't get involved in that story, unfortunately. As much as I would like to send some volunteers over. We do have good war support. Ooh, that's quite impressive. So, what can we do? Is there anything... I don't think there's any 35-day focus in this. And I love those in the new expansions because it feels like it feels like you're getting a reward, but really quickly. So, the arms exports, this, this uh, helps the industry a little bit. But um, it just gives you, like, a, a slight buff, really, to your industry rather than anything major. That one's the most use. That's going to give us infrastructure and civilian factories. Or if we go for this one... Actually, that gives us infrastructure, whereas this just gives us all civilian factories. Uh, I think I... Oh, hang on. Civilian factory. If I don't do this, though... What's this also give us? More civilian factories, more civilian factories. Whereas this is increasing infrastructure as we go. And then gives us this, which removes... I need to go this. I'll tell you why. This removes the divided nation. I'll show you what that is. I should have maybe shown you guys this at the start. Divided nation is this. Recruitable population penalty. Stability penalty. So that has to go. And there's a couple of ways of getting rid of it in the focus tree. But that is our easy option to get rid of it. So we're giving up three civilian factories to get three levels of infrastructure. I can live with that. I can live with that. So far we don't have a whole load of forts built. That bit's coming, don't worry. So we need, we've got a general in charge, which is excellent. Games with the Olympiad, excellent. Yes, Germany's winning medals and cheating and getting upset when uh, they don't win everything. <laughs> that was the reason World War II kicked off. Ethiopia has capitulated. Oh, yes, part of Italy now. I was looking for Ethiopia. I'm thinking, I can't see it. Of course not, because it's not there anymore. So what we're going to see in this playthrough, I'm going to be curious to see if that Battle of the Bosphorus expansion actually makes those countries do anything different or weird. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool to figure out. Where are we? Oh, let's get this one because we're well behind with that. Not that I'm planning on doing any fighting anytime soon, but we'll see. What's the situation with the aircraft? I just have a little look over here. We've got basic, we've got engine one, and we've got light machine guns. Excellent. So... I could crank out a basic small airframe and we could start getting some simple fighters put into the sky. I might do that. And speaking of putting things into the sky, we're not going to have a great source of fuel. And if we're surrounded 
fuel's going to be a problem, so refineries are going to have to be uh, created. We're in 36. Do I want to just keep plowing down here? I need to get rid of that debuff. And civilian factories are worth it. So with these coming on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just going to request a couple of militaries. Let's, let's be risky and put them right in the border there. Let's go with that. So we've got uh, some political power. I would like... Let me think. Get rid of that civilian economy. Yes. Let's, let's do that to start with. That's going to give me some more factories here. And it's going to get things moving a bit faster. All right, so are we trained up? We are trained up. Let me edit my... I was going to the wrong button up there. Do I want to add artillery straight into this? Or do I want to drop them in as some support artillery? Either way, we want support anti-air and we want uh, cavalry on this. Actually, let's remove that. I'm going to put light tank recon on because we can. Because we can. Dispersed industry. Nice. We've got that going. And ooh, what shall I do? There or there? Hmm. Let's put it in the line. I, I've, I've quite like putting it in there. Save it. It seemed to work well playing as the, the other nations recently, so let's stick with that. November 36. Let's go for construction 2. We'll get that a little bit early because we're going to have to create some forts. Actually, most of them are going to be created by focus. So it's going to save us a lot of a lot of industry and construction power. We can, I think we can create a new commander for this guy now. Right, let's see what we've got. I don't want to get rid of the mountaineers because they might come in useful. Let's promote you. I've never understood why that screen, after you promote one, you then can't assign him directly to the army that you... You've just been looking at. It's always kind of kind of odd that. And we will just train at what we've got, but I'll show you what these templates are like for the uh, for the light tanks. <laughs> it's not great, is it? I don't think we're going to get anything too exciting from that. Sweden's purchasing some close air support. Good for Sweden. And we've got. Oh, we can get Beacon of Liberty. Uh, I think I definitely... It's 14 days. Yeah, we, we take that right away. That's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Brilliant. As we're coming up to Christmas 36, we have spare factories already. Okay, this, this is looking a lot better. One thing we will need to get built up is anti-aircraft. We do start with some. We can probably hold off on that a little bit. And... I will try and get some more military factories out. Let's put a load in here and then see what we get. So, we're doing that one. I love these fast ones. That is good stuff. From there, we're kind of stuck there for the time being, so that's fine. Are we going to do this? 140 days. It's taking us well into 37 before I start going down this. Actually, I, I think we can hold off on this. I'll get this one for civilian factories and infrastructure. This infrastructure, if it's going in the right place, it's going to help our resources, which, which are going to suck. Are going to suck terribly. We need Chief of the Air Force. We're going to go for the ground support guy, are we? Minus 10% to air accidents. No, we're going to go for, we're going to go for um, the air superiority. Not that we'll be actually triggering that very much, because it, it's very costly in, uh, in aircraft. Huh. We're going to need trucks and trains, aren't we? Wow, okay, so the light tanks, we're needing more light tanks than I figured for, for doing the, um, the armoured recon business. Do they really use tungsten for that? I thought it would just be steel at that level. Well, things are turning out. Uh, 
you know what? I, I might just go back because that seems, that seems expensive. We have the tiniest bit of armor. I'd love to get like medium tanks in here to give us some proper armor, but the fuel is going to be a problem, isn't it? I'm going to change that back. I don't think I'm going to invest enough into, into light tanks and industry. Yeah, that looks, that looks safer to be, make that worthwhile. Right, so we've got one thing going off. We could do... We're going to be short on steel. Oh, and oil. Hang on. That does actually get us one more oil. It is that one, isn't it? We'll just hold on that a minute. Let's build, let's build some AA. Just because it gives me something to, to think about whilst we get everything else planned out. Support weapons one, Jan 37. We can make do with basic trucks for now. Oh God, we don't have engineers? Hang on, do we not have, we don't have engineers? I thought they were already in the template. No, okay, we need engineers then. Engineers are kind of cool because of the, uh, the extra defenses they give. And who's coming shopping now? The Netherlands. Going to buy some of our tactical bombers. Yep. I will take that deal. Infantry equipment. Boost that. And do we have enough? We might have enough to get the first... Oh, we're going to be building into war stuff. Am I not researching the better planes? I'm not yet. Then... Oh, screw it. Yeah, let's, let's do this. So it starts with that. Can we put some more? Can we put some more? Come on, please. We can. Cool. Oh, and make sure we add that in as well. Save. So these are going to be like really basic aircraft. And you might think that there's no point in building them. But actually on home ground, just on bomber interception duties, they can actually provide some good bonus. They can they can intercept and cause enough problems for the enemy to disrupt a few attacks. And it's I think it's worth doing. They will be outnumbered, but uh, well, that, we're just going to have to accept that, I think. So we're in 37 now. Let's definitely get the rest of the industry going. I always like this build-up to uh, the exciting bits, the, the war kicking off, just getting everything prepared. And it always feels like you are so underprepared. Like, we have one army sitting on the front line across there, and that's it. And it feels like it's it's not enough. It, it's hopeless. But here's where it starts getting interesting. Let's put the rest of the army in. And also, I'm just going to just draw a line in here. So for the time being, as long as Germany doesn't um, take Austria into its fold then we actually have a front line on there, which is kind of cool. The Regional Defence Council of... Yeah, this lot. Okay, yeah, we may as well upgrade the new aircraft. How are we doing for numbers here? It's looking a bit healthier. I'm going to start putting things into trucks and trains and stuff like that because we're just, we're just going to have to have them. Otherwise, no supplies. So, let's have a look at the focus I have picked. The fortification studies. This one, how, what does it give us? Uh, it adds fortification focus, which grants recruitable population, which is nice. And land fort construction speed, plus 30%. And we get a little bit of army experience as well, but that's that's not quite so vital from that. It's actually it's what it leads to, isn't it? The Sudetenland early fortifications. Now, these two, these three together, will give us level 7 forts in those places. And that's that's going to be significant in keeping the Germans out because most of the time they won't even try to attack that. At least that's our hope. So I'm going to start building up this new army straight away. And that's going to mean a brand new general, isn't it? Let's have a look. So we'll take someone from... We'll give this guy. He used to be a mountaineer. And I think that portrait... Is that not an American... General? That portrait? I'm not sure. 
Okay, so we'll put new units into there, and we shall see where we go from there. Who's the defensive field man? Make sure I've got the right way around. Yes, I have. Okay. That's cool. The Hindenburg disaster. Oh, dear. I guess we shouldn't be relying on hydrogen to power our aircraft. Chinese United Front forms. Here they all come to join the United Front. We now have engineers, so we can definitely put those into the infantry templates. That'll be super useful. Is it too early? It's a bit too early for war austerity trains. Uh, it's a bit little early for those. I'm trying to find something where we don't have a huge... Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I would like to get making some tanks, but not light tanks. I don't feel like we have a lot of use for these. So let's research these. We have a medium tank designer. Yeah, that was that was a shame. <laughs> I shouldn't shouldn't have done that. But anyway, it's fine. We'll use our medium tank designer and level up that company instead. You never know. We might do something with light tanks later, depending on how things turn out. Get him training. They need retraining as well. Mountaineers train. Okay. We have a very small amount of manpower. Chinese United Front is growing. Hang on, get those off the screen so I can see what we're doing. Infantry equipment. We could always use more of that. The artillery at one a day. Slow going, isn't it? Let's put a train on. Yeah, I know. It didn't really fulfill any of the needs of the, the army at all, but we need them. We do need them. We could go with... I guess we go with more military factories now as we're leveling up our AA defenses one bit at a time it'll, it'll come together so fortification studies there's some other nice things in here but the first thing we must do is go straight down this because we absolutely without any question have to have this area fortified to the max by 38 can't remember the exact date when Germany kicks things off, but it's in 38. So as long as we've got that, we should be fine. And Hungary and Poland and Romania, that, that can wait a little while. A little while, anyway. Well, have we got more? Excellent. Our divisions are getting cranked out. We can put some more into training. We'll make sure... Oh, we haven't added the engineers in. Oops. Right, okay. Oh, hang on, we've got some going here. Let's just add. Yeah, too many. Too many. We can do that many. So we're slowly getting this formed up. What we'll probably do is disband the cavalry at some point. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to form a fallback line. And we're going to go like this. Just hang on, not across there. So we need to make sure that that covers that entire front. Because I, I think Austria will... Uh, I think they're going to end up in Germany, aren't they? Let's be honest. I'd be very surprised if it was anything else. So we have some political power to spend. Right, we can't change conscription anymore until we're at war. Because we are democratic. So there's that. Let's see who... We, oh, this is our choice of political advisors. Seriously, if you look at any new nation or any nation that's had anything in recent DLCs, they've got a page of this. So we are... We are limited here. The elusive gentleman. We need to create the spy agency first before we get him. The fascist demagogue and the communist revolution. We were never getting those. So do we want a quartermaster general? I mean... And there's some uses there. Actually, there's some better stuff in here. If we look at the Skoda, this gives us industrial research speed plus 15%. And I think that's going to be... I think that's going to be worthwhile doing. Right, what have we got? We could start boosting all sorts of things, actually. Let's put a couple of factories into the Air Force. Ready for that coming along. 
and how's the AA looking now? So brilliant, it's looking a lot better. There's there's some tiny little regions here that it takes the same amount to, to cover this with AA as it would cover like a huge area like that. Okay, well it needs doing, so I'll leave it on. Japan declared war on China. It's not really a great surprise, is it? Marco Polo bridge incident. Just an excuse to go to war, which drags the whole area into war. I'm going to have to... I mean, I know a little bit about the, the war over here from the, the World War II channel, which is fantastic. I've been enjoying watching those. But I don't know anything about the individual warlords of China. These other nations, if that's the right term for them. So did they, did they all fight under one flag? Uh, were they like a, a faction like the Allies? Were they subjugated by what we know as China? I know nothing about that. So, I mean, I, I'm guessing it, it was like this because the, the, the game is portraying it like this, but I, I don't know. Something to look for anyway. 